Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer uh, interview here at Gen Con 2018 in Indiana, Indianapolis. And we are here with Stephen Barry with uh, Vital and his game Infinity's Defiance of Fate. It's a one to four player game in which you're going to be basically playing around on a board using tableau management and dice rolling to successfully defeat your opponents by gathering more points than them. So go ahead and discuss the game even more than myself here. Sure. So um, what we're showing off at the con here is an introductory skirmish mode, like you said, the competitive play that's points-based. Uh, we actually recently added a tutorial mode, so it helps us demo the game, but also help you teach your friends once you get the game. That first time, you can just sort of play until you're comfortable, until you want to go to the, the true rules. Um, and of course, we're describing the story mode to people. We have the multiplayer branching chapters with soft legacy elements. And we've also recently announced that each of the leaders in the game will have their own solo mode. So you have challenging uh, tasks to overcome for each of the leaders. So lots of gameplay. I noticed that uh, when I first got this game, when we were first playing it, there is a bunch of different scenarios that are going to affect the way you play the game and how you're going to gather points, right? And that's still like that now. Uh, what are some uh, changes you've made throughout the process? So visually, one of the things we did was we upgraded the pawns to standees to give a 3D element to the board. Uh, that was some feedback we had uh, previously. Didn't want to upgrade all the way to miniatures just um, for ideological reasons and also financial reasons, uh, but it still gives that element. Gameplay-wise, we streamlined the game uh, a lot, actually. Um, took a lot of triggers and interruptions out of the game, uh, kept the flow uh, fast-paced, so rather than you take all your actions, then you go to the next person, now it's a back-and-forth volley. So you do one thing, next guy does another thing, the next girl does another thing and so on. So you're only waiting about five minutes instead of 15 minutes between the times you're active player in the game. So, so that, that's the main thing. Yeah, so basically in the game you're going to be, uh, it has somewhat of a Yahtzee feel to it where you're rolling dice and you're choosing to keep certain ones based on the die that are going to be rolled. And then with those die you can then use them to perform actions, such as moving across this board here. And based on the class characters you pick and whatnot is where you're going to be drawing from these tiles here and basically putting them on the board and utilizing their abilities. Now originally the abilities in the board were a little more complex and now you guys will simplify the board itself. So yes. when I played it most recently, now, I actually understood all the tiles fairly easily, and I was able to use not only just the player board, which is what I mainly used the first game, but also now the board itself, or the, uh, the tableau of the different um, tile sets, which is really, really nice. So what made you make those changes? So previously, we had different sets of events um, separate from the attributes in the game. What we did is we actually collapsed attributes and the tile types uh, into each other. So that's actually where the area control element came into as well when we did our revamp um, to bring in those players that scratches that itch as well where you have formalized area control where there hadn't been before. Uh, you had to memorize all of these different icons uh, for the different events on the tiles. Like you said before, it's kind of hard to keep up with all of them. Now there's only three event types and they match your attributes. So you already know those icons. Uh, there's only one side of the reference card rather than two full sides of icons to memorize. So uh, it's, it's easier for entry level but there's still uh, a high skill cap in the game. It's just a lower skill f uh, floor, essentially. Yeah, there's still quite a lot of choices because you're still gonna have guy. You're still actually gonna have units on the board as well as cards you can basically like t time up to get ready to use. Right. Cards in your hand, and then of course you have actions on the side of your board here. Reactions and actions that you can participate in using, depending on what your opponent does or what you choose to do. But I mean, the main purpose of the game is to gain points, and then of course over here is gonna be a turn order as well as a round number, and of course the uh, tracker for the points in the right. game, right? And did you get you guys change this one a little bit as well too, right? Uh, a little bit. We um, just for for UX purposes, we uh, increase the five so it's easier to count off from a distance where you're at. Uh, but this is this is fairly similar. It was card based before, but we made it into a proper mat, so it just sort of has its own dedicated area of the table. Um, so it makes it a little easier to read and, and track what's going on. And to your point about the cards, I mean that's that's probably the part of the game where mastery comes in because there's so much card text. So just like any game where you've got card text that's more than just a quick sentence, it's going to take some time. So you'll have to practice with that. But getting the basic dice actions down and exploration, that's usually one game and people are square. And you have a lot of characters now, and I'm so to see a lot of the artwork, which is awesome. The artwork for this game is excellent. I love the feel of it. It has its own kind of like fantasy setting. This guy here is one of my personal favorites here, the Master of Ash. Yeah. But you have all sorts of different characters yeah. here. And, and the cool thing with this game, uh, at Dice Tower Con, an interesting reaction that we had was um, 
It was a mother that was saying that both of her sons would love this game because one loves Harry Potter and one loves Doctor Who, and you've got the sci-fi and fantasy together in this game. So that's something that's going to appeal to both of those types of fan bases. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about the game before we head out? Like where, when it's going to be on Kickstarter, uh, where they should go check it out, like maybe your site or Facebook page or all that kind of stuff? So we're at uh, VitalES.com. Uh, you can do a backslash how to play for a short two and a half minute video. You can do backslash rulebook to read the rules and you can do backslash story to look at a demo version of three multiplayer chapters and one solo mode that's actually with Orin the Master of Ash. So you can try it right now on Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia with links from our site. Awesome. And a final question I've been asking everybody is, what is the one thing you want to contribute to the gaming community that uh, other people are not doing or something that's specifically to you that you want to kind of see more of? Uh, I left one thing off. Our Kickstarter is on the 21st of August, by the way. It's pretty important. <laughs> yes, it's pretty important. Uh, so something that I would like to see more of is um, a bigger presence on Kickstarter with first timers. Uh, they kind of get drowned out a little bit. So I've actually started a little support group for people like myself and my, my co-designer. So we can see uh, more people's ideas out there. It's kind of like an analog to the uh, pub. Kind of what I do anyway, yeah, right? Yeah. It's kind of like an analog to the publishing industry though, as far as uh, literature goes, where it's so hard to start, but once you get in, it becomes easier. So I'd like to see more entry, entry points for first timers to get in, show people their cool ideas because you don't have to have a million dollar budget to have cool ideas and make a fun experience for people. Um, but I guess ultimately what I really want to do is just bring people to the table and have fun with friends and family. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Stephen, to uh, show us a little bit about Infinity's Defiance of Fate. I got to actually review this game, so if you want to check out my review, you can go ahead and do so on our channel, unfilteredgamer.com, slash, um, I think it's reviews, I guess, <laughs> or just youtube.com slash unfilteredgamer. But uh, I appreciate you taking the time with us, and I will uh, see you later, as well as Thanks, seeing you guys next time. <laughs> Hey guys, Michael Wright from Unfiltered Gamer, and I'm with John Lundgren, and we are here at Gen Con 2018. We're going to talk about Fallen Dominion Studios, Fallen Land, the post-apocalyptic board game. So, Fallen, Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game, 13 years in the making. It is a go-anywhere, do-anything sandbox-style game. Uh, very thematic, go-anywhere, do-anything. You are the leader of one of ten unique factions. You are going to be growing and building your town in addition to sending out your party to... Sending out Heavy. your party to do to capture resources, uh, do missions, um, it, PvP other parties, stop them from completing their objectives. Uh, there are two different victory conditions: prestige to 20 and town health to 80. Prestige represents how other people view your leadership in the fallen lands, and town health is the size and prosperity of your town. And you can do whatever you want pretty much in this game. You can travel wherever you want. And when you go to different locations, you're going to be drawing different cards like these mountainous trains, maybe for mountainous areas. And then you on the back, there is a large amount of text. Now, don't let this fool you, actually. Most of it is going to be story, which is really interesting and really unique about this game. I got to review this. So if you want to see the review, you can go ahead and check that out on my channel. But otherwise, you can notice that like something, okay, what's well, this, an Outriders trading post, uh, the world card, and it does something that involves everybody sometimes. Or sometimes it's just you. Sometimes it'll make you go across the entire map of the game and while you're doing that you have to do other cards so it has this huge wide world advanced fantasy RPG uh, post apocalyptic fantasy RPG I should say but uh, you get to do pretty much whatever you want it's like a sandbox which is yeah. so nice I haven't seen a lot of games that do that we wanted to create uh, you know it took us 13 years to create this beast it's a unique animal it's a fully immersive post apocalyptic experience uh, you know we flew under the radar all those years that's what we enjoy doing. Wanted to make a big cannonball splash in the pool. Um, yeah, www.fallendominionstudios.com. We just released Outriders Trading Post, which is the original 2016 Kickstarter content. Uh, October 22nd, we go back to Kickstarter. Uh, we're going to have a deluxe organizer expansion. It's going to reduce the massive footprint on the, of this game on the table by like 20%, 25%. So. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, the first thing I think people get, like they, when they see it, they go, oh my gosh, it's just massive. But the game's not very difficult to learn. And once you get it, it goes. Now, it's a longer game because you have to read the story elements. And you don't have to, but 
you have to read the story elements. There's just too much goodness inside the box. So yeah, set some time aside to read and play the game. I had a ton of fun playing this game. Nice, it works yeah, all the way up. Solo player actually works really well too, but I like more and more players because that interaction makes a huge the difference. Yeah, both, there's two different solo variants with differing uh, skill challenge levels. Uh, I personally like the interaction as well. The more players, the more cutthroat it gets. Uh, it really adds a lot of elements of fun when you have just people helping each other, making alliances, backstabbing each other. It's, what can I say? It's just a labor of love for 13 years. There's about 650 of my short stories It's a massive RPG. There, if you so. like RPGs, you're going to enjoy this game. But anyway, John, thank you so much for taking the Michael, time here at Gen Con, you. having a good time. I'm glad to have met you, and I hope to see the new campaign going on pretty I'll, soon here in I'll October, be right? You soon, Not so. only that, but one more question: sure. What do you want to introduce into the board gaming community that's unique for your like in the future? Like, what's the, what's what's the point for you? Uh, we have a lot of really cool things coming down the pipeline. This is our first product. Uh, Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game. We also have a Journey into Darkness and Outriders Trading Post. Uh, the fourth installment of Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game is going to be the Deluxe Organizer expansion. It's going to have an, uh, the 10th Town Technology, 11th Faction to play, and a whole bunch of uh, other thematic goodness. We're going to have... Uh, Another third solo variant. Is the variant. idea to just create a bunch of theme into a game, though? Is that what you want, an immense storyline? That's kind of what I feel like. I'm a writer by, by trade. I, I write a lot of pulpy stuff. Uh, I just wanted to bring uh, as much theme to, the, to a board game, and I wanted it to be completely immersive experience. When Sean and I started this, you know, back in 2005, we just wanted to lay some real solid bedrock down in the post-apocalyptic genre, and I feel pretty confident we do, we've done that. So. No, I definitely believe so as well. Anyway, go ahead and check out the game. Fallen Dominion Studios, Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game. www.fallendominionstudios.com, and we're on Facebook, too. Give us a follow at Fallen Dominion Studios LLC. And I just thank you for stopping by our booth, Michael. Oh, I'm no a big problem. fan of the show. So. Thank you. And as always, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. <laughs> Thanks. Hi guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm Callie, and I'm here with Jade James from uh, from Pillbox Games, and they are featuring their game Side Effects here at the con. Uh, how's the con going for you, Jade? It's wonderful. I especially love the uh, Klingon band out, out front playing the oh, Cantina yeah. song. Yeah. yeah, it's one of my favorite songs from the movie. Oh, cool. Glad to hear that the con's going great. So uh, tell us a little bit about Side Effects, you know, who who likes the game. I know we did a review of it recently, which we'll have the link, of course, down there. But uh, just, yeah, just a short synopsis. Uh, short synopsis. Wow, it's been such a wild ride. It's hard to um, truncate it at all. Uh, so I, um, uh, Pillbox Games is made up of um, myself and Ben Bronstein, uh, Jennifer Guarta, and Cat Peck, and um, we developed this game, Side Effects, which is um, it's a card game um, where you're treating uh, mental disorders with drugs and therapy, but unfortunately drugs also cause more mental disorders, so you have to deal with that, and um, it's a real backstabby kind of card game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, do you have any uh, special art you want to show oh, yeah. us from yeah, the game, I or show you. this is the this is the final box, and um, our beautiful rule book, nice. and some of our cards, and we really spared no expense. Uh, really, um, our backers spared no expense because they're the ones that got us to the stretch goal, all the stretch goals that um, provided us with such beautiful detail. Wow, that's so great for your first game. Oh, wow, I see yeah. the gold edge yeah, there. Yeah, the gold wow. Edge is really, really, really beautiful. I'm just so impressed at how uh, well it came out and um, what great attention to detail uh, Panda spent on it. So. Um, nice. And they show maybe the other side there. Yeah, of course. You can show some of those cards. So basically, you're going to be dealt four of these disorder cards. And then it becomes a race to use the cards in your hand, 
like drugs and um, place them on top of the disorder cards and treat them. The first person to treat all of them wins, but these all contain side effects, which are other disorders that other players can now give to you, like, like that. And, and the Kickstarter edition, which um, I, I'm not sure when this is going out, but I believe the pre-order is still happening. You can still get this edition, which is kind of rare because you'll get bonus cards in there, like high tolerance, um, and in misdiagnosis, which I'm trying to find. Um, and I, because the retail version, this is, it's too expensive for retail, so we're gonna have a retail version come out probably sometime in January. Um, but this version is exclusive. Um, you get the extra room to hold expansion packs um, or extra decks. And as we explained in a, a recent update, this is a modular-based card game, so you can actually subtract or add cards to the game to fine-tune it to your liking. So if someone um, you know, wanted to try to get this game, either this version or the, or the upcoming uh, retail version, where, where should they go to sign up for information? I think the easiest way um, to get your hands on it is just go to pillboxgames.com and there's a buy button right on the homepage and go there that will take you to the pre-order and in the future the retail version just sign up for our mailing list and you'll be the first to know when it comes out. Awesome, thanks for sharing. I have one more question. Um, what do you think you or your team you know, uniquely is uniquely bringing to the board game community? What do you see as your vision for the board game community? Oh, wow. Well, um, first of all, I'm just sort of humbled by the community um, at large. I, I'm just I'm so honored to even be a part of it because um, I really love it so much. Uh, what we're contributing, I guess, um, it's, it's sort of a parlor-esque kind of card game um, that's very easy to explain um, and e easy to pick up, um, but, but is difficult to master. And... Um, there are a lot of strategies in it, even though uh, part of the game is based in luck. Um, so I, you know what, I'm just interested in learning how people play the game, what kind of personalities they bring to the game. I know that every time I play with somebody new, they have their own way of, of approaching it and playing it. Some play very aggressively, some play very timidly, some make lots of deals, sometimes they make no deals at all. And that's what I think I, I love about that, and I guess if I could say that I'm contributing anything, it would be a game that allows you to be a version of yourself. Awesome, well thanks for sharing Jade from uh, Pillbox Game with his game Side Effects. Uh, and I uh, hope you have a great con. Thank you so much That's for it. talking with us. I did. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, thank you for watching our Unfiltered Gamer interview. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, I'm Michael Wright from Unfiltered Gamer, and I'm here with Breeze Grigas at Gen Con 2018 in Indiana, Indianapolis. And we're going to be talking about Aegis Combining Robust Strategy Game Fight and Unite. So exactly what is this game? I know I reviewed it before, but let's go ahead and go over it now. All right, so this game is a fast-paced tactics game. It's like a 20, 30-minute game, but it can go from two to six players. Uh, it is a game about combining robots. So players build teams of five robots, and they fight against their opponents' teams of five robots. It is made to be a fast skirmish game that is affordable, easier, easier to learn, and uh, faster to get through than your average uh, war game. So uh, it feels like Final Fantasy Tactics meets kind of like yeah. an Ultron slash like like combining robot style game. Oh yeah, it's like Pokemon meets Voltron. Uh, it's a lot of it is based on like digital tactics games like Advance Wars, Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, but yeah, you always start with five robots, and it, it never gets bigger. Uh, it actually gets smaller as the game goes on, as you make uh, more important decisions. Uh, yeah. When I first got the game, there was a, a certain amount of robots. I know there's probably more now. How many more, and uh, what players, and uh, where can we find the game as well? So the game has 100 usable robots in no, the box. No, I didn't get anywhere near that. What the know, heck? Right? You got like 40 or something. It was crazy. So and they're all different. Like healers, and you got range. You got yeah. one guy who cannot move at all, but he fires yeah, yeah. like crazy. So yeah, the the main gimmick is yeah, you have five different kinds of robot: assault, evasive, guard, intel, and support. Spells Aegis. Uh huh. And so you take robot. Pretty nifty little trick there. Is that acronyms are sweet, right? So you can make your team of five out of any robots that you want. All eight types is fine. But yeah, you can take robots of different letters and you can put them together to make larger robots. 
Um, so yeah, and, and there's like exclusive stuff too, because I got a couple of those. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, big monstrous robots. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, this is the final game. This is the first time it's ever being sold. Uh, we really threw the kitchen sink in there. Even but though, even though there's lots of stuff when you open the box, everything's in pre-built teams and pre-constructed decks, so you can just open it up and play immediately. Want to make everything really easy for you. Uh, and we only we're giving you this game. This game's like 50 bucks, and you can get it on Robots. And there's Tech. a ton of stuff in this game. Yeah, for 50 bucks, that's a great deal. Where can you get yeah. it? Again? Sorry. Uh, yeah, hundred cards, hundred pieces, double-sided board, customizable terrain tiles, custom dice, so many other things, and. Uh, you can get it at robotstrategygame.com. We're going to be fulfilling it through. We're going to be fulfilling the Kickstarter and the pre-orders in about a month, and we're just having these pre-sale versions here at Gen Con this weekend, and we're probably going to sell out, which is great. Uh, it's been a long time coming. A uh, lot of really cool people worked on this game for a very long time, and it's it's awesome seeing it's it's here. It's, it's great. It's all ready and it's all done. Yeah, exactly. It's, what, it's awesome. One last question yeah. for you. So you're in the hobby now. You've got your first game out. What kind of impact do you want to make in the board gaming industry? Like, what's your one thing you want to what you want to show the community? Different, something unique to you. I want people to play my games, and I want them to appreciate the work we put in, and then I want them to also feel inspired to make things. I want them to make their own. I want people who play our games to feel inspired to make their dreams come true. That is the most important thing to me. I like that answer. All right, man, Breeze, I really greatly appreciate you taking the time to show us your game and whatnot. I'm super happy to see it here in all its glory. After I finally got it, Daniel sent it to us. We had to try the game out. I'm like, wow, this game has really cool aspects to it. I can see all the additional stuff that can be added. Is there any more uh, Aegis stuff that's going to be kind of in the future that you have an idea for? Oh, absolutely. We've already started work on, like, expansions and stuff like that. The game is pretty... The game's expandable. Uh, every expansion that we release for Aegis is going to be like playable on, as a standalone. So you'll just get like it's going to be like an LCG where you get box of stuff, box of stuff, box of stuff. Um, and well, we can probably keep it going for a while. Awesome. Well, thanks again, man. I greatly appreciate Thank it. You. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.